I know uh, there's some people uh, probably doing a, a few of things, but we just wanted to come in and, and say hello, and we'll just kind of wait a little bit. Judy, how's your week going? Our week is going good. Very busy with the children and very busy um, doing schooling. And we're thankful to be celebrating a birthday this week. We are celebrating for um, my sister-in-law and my sister. And so we're thankful for that. This has been a blessed week. Yeah, we, uh, we wanted to come here and I wanted to share a word and a scripture that God had put in our heart. And so um, we we're hoping uh, to, to get to do that here in a little bit. And so that's what uh, we're looking forward to. Uh, I want to let you know we've been working on a, um, on a uh, YouTube channel. What do you think? I'm thanking God that we're taking steps, broader steps to new places. And so wherever, whatever God has been opening the doors, we're excited about it. We were having so much fun. I think it was Thursday, where um, uh, we were there uh, in our place, and and it, it's amazing how we were able to turn our um, our place into a little studio. We had uh, my son Dan. He's doing a three week um, revival, or it's Bible study. Uh, Bible study for the youth. Yeah, it's a three week uh, a Bible study for one of the churches in Fresno, and so he was. He's uh, got his Zoom going on, and, and, and uh, he had that going. And then I'm uh, recording a podcast in another room. And then, Judy, uh, what were you doing? <laughs> we're doing our dandelion with uh, schooling with a younger year old. I have a preschooler, and I have a four-year-old who's, a, I mean, excuse me, an eight-year-old who's in third grade. And so we love sharing. Um, well, I've enjoyed sharing with other moms, especially during this pandemic time that moms that are staying at home and for the first time they're starting to um, get into um, homeschooling and curriculum and it's it's a huge um, process and we've been doing it for you know 12 years my my son's going to be a senior graduating this year and it's in a you know so many years I've been doing it so many different programs and so I really have taken it upon myself just well I have so much information to share I have so much curriculum I've tried so many things and so um, now starting up with my preschooler, our last child again, it's been, you know, I'm having fun because I'm getting to try all these different things. He's a different learner. He's not like all the other, my other four. Actually, all of them, you know, my last two, they've been different. And so I love sharing, like, I've had experiences, you know, with, you know, kids that were great at the start. It's maybe some were a little bit troublesome. And so I learned how to change things up, how to get better curriculum, how to help them. And so that's what uh, Dandelion Homeschooling does. And I'm on Instagram, if any mom or, you know, even if you just know someone who they've been kind of having a hard time, we're getting already uh, almost six months to, well, a year, we're going into the new school year and, and it, it's difficult. There's a lot to go with it. And so I'm there to support and if you ever want to just flash me a question or curious about the curriculum we're using I'm really open to everything and I really love being able to be a resource for moms to have. Yeah so it was pretty neat so our home turned into a little mini studio but I guess we can get started. Um, thank you so much for joining us today uh, yes. we really do appreciate you. Dina good to see you. Uh, uh, cousin Claudia uh, I hope you're doing well. I could see uh, our family from Fort Worth uh, Texas, uh, wonderful to, to see them. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, listen, we just wanted to take some time here on a Sunday and to share a, um, uh, a prayer and a scripture that God had put in my heart. And so uh, that's what we were uh, hoping to do today and, and uh, we wanted to do it. Um, Judy, you want to say hello to everybody? Yeah. Well, hello again. But uh, I really want to appreciate all of those who are uh, tagging and all of those who have been in all of those who have just been in support, you know, for what we're starting, it, it means a lot. It means a lot just to see your your likes or your waving faces or uh, subscribing to, you know, this the, you know the podcast. It it really has let us know that hey, we can be used in this way, and we're wanting to make ourselves available. So just we thank you, thank you for your support, and we love you all for that. Thank you. You know, this this week we've been going uh, uh, through a, a journey in the Book of Acts. And uh, we were looking at Acts chapter 12, and it, it's an amazing chapter, and I, I wanted to share this with you, because um, I was looking at it, and if you read Acts chapter 12, it starts with a gruesome death, and it ends with a gruesome death. And then there's a great testimony right in between. But I was thinking about this scripture. Um, it, it really m meant something to me, because at the start of the scripture, it says 
that Herod the king goes and grabs the apostle James, arrests him, and the Bible says that he dies by the sword. Now that can't be pretty. That had to be intensely painful. And, and he kills him. And then at the end of chapter 12, it says that, there, uh, that that same King Herod, the executioner, now also suffers a death himself and a gruesome death. I didn't make this up, but the Bible says that worms actually ate him from the inside out. Sounds completely painful. And so, and so you see both of these deaths. And as I was thinking about uh, what to share, I just wanted to, to uh, share a word with you. I felt so impressed that you see two deaths here. And when you think of the death of James, the death of James is something difficult. Imagine your favorite preacher, I mean the bishop, somebody you know in a position where you would never expect that the man of God would have to suffer this gruesome murder, and here he's killed. And uh, I believe that the author of, of the book of Acts, which is Luke, I believe he wanted us to compare and contrast these two gruesome deaths. Because you see the, the, the death of James, and he suffered, and, and having to die of the sword. And then you see uh, King Herod, who loved pride, loved uh, worship from man. And you know what the Bible says, God resists the proud. And he definitely resisted King Herod. Because the Bible says that the angel struck him with the disease, where worms came inside of his body and killed him. I, I didn't make that up, that's what the scripture says. And I... I felt very, very strongly impressed that when I was reading this scripture, I wanted to share to all of you, we are living in a time where we're hearing about it. We're almost afraid to open up our social media. We're almost afraid to see a picture there because we know that it might represent that somebody that's gone away. We've seen so much of it. Uh, my poor wife, she has to deal with me because I'm always giving her the statistics. Santa Clara County, Fresno County, I'm always giving her the statistics. She knows uh, you know, what happens every day. Uh, um, just because uh, I'm, and then I always have to break it down, babe, one out of 17 people in America have COVID right now because they just released the 25 million. And so I, you know, uh, she has to hear all this. But in the middle of all of this outbreak, in the middle of this pandemic, we're seeing death. The same way that we saw death with James and we saw the death with Herod. Difficult, intense, painful. But both of those deaths had different results because Herod he died a death that there was no honor in it he wasn't close to God God wasn't a part of his life there was no honor there but then you look at the death of of James and he might have suffered and endured pain here on earth but there was a heaven's reward waiting for him and God had something so special for him and I wanted you to know that during this time I I'm not trying to be grim. I'm just trying to tell you that our loved ones, those that are dealing with what they're dealing with, we know that there's a hope for those that are believers and that love God. There's a strength. There's a, a special place that God takes care of His own. And in the middle of chapter 12, I, I thought I wanted, I, I really wanted to share this part, is that you see the story where uh, Peter is imprisoned and he's about to be executed himself. And the Bible says that God's people begin to pray earnestly, which that's our source of power. Whenever we're going through a trial, whenever something difficult, we need to pray earnestly. If we're not plugging into that source of power, we're missing this strength that we can have. And I know it's life and it's hell's job to distract us, to detour us, to discourage us so that we don't do this. But I'm not here for hell. I'm after heaven. And as long as I plug into heaven and plug into God on a daily basis, we can get that power. And the Bible says that as they were earnestly praying, God answered. Miraculously, uh, Peter is released from prison. And Peter goes to the door of the prayer meeting there at Mary's house, knocks on the door. A young, the Bible says a maidservant, a young lady. She goes, runs, opens the door, and she hears the voice of Peter. She gets excited. God answered the prayer. I could hear the voice of the preacher. God answered. But the Bible is very, very clear to tell us that Rhoda got so excited that she left Peter standing out speaking to go tell everybody else that he was there. And I felt very, very impressed for all of our friends, for all of our family, for us, that sometimes God, he'll answer our prayer and he knocks at the door and he speaks to us. And we get so excited because we heard the word. We hear this word from God. 
But then we run away because of the excitement there. And I felt very, very strongly to tell you that in 2021, God is speaking. What you see us doing right now is us acting on God, speaking to our heart. And I feel like sometimes we hear God's voice, we get excited, and we leave Him outside the gate. There's no letting Him in. There's no change. There's no movement and activity where He becomes the center. And so on this Sunday, very shortly, I just wanted to tell you that I believe God's speaking. And that's exciting. But don't get so excited that you run off and you miss it. Open the gate. Get the door wide open and let Him in. And when He comes in, He changes, He moves, and you begin to act on it. I really, really believe that. I don't want to be satisfied with just a word. I don't want to be satisfied with just a morsel of God's feeling. In 2021, there's people that need our love. They need our connection. And thank God that we have these mediums like video, Facebook, and social media so that we can speak to, an, uh, to each other. We really need each other. We're better together. And I really believe that, that, that God, if we can just not only receive Him, get excited, that's fine, but also let Him in. I can't be satisfied with just hearing His voice. I have to do something with it. Judy, what do you think? Right now, you're just thinking about that word and satisfaction. There are so many times in our um, lives or journey where we do, we all want satisfaction in life, in our marriages, with our children, you know, and all the, the aspects in life where we're always seeking for it. We're always seeking for satisfaction and in, in, in wanting the best, you know, for ourselves or for whatever. But, you know, sometimes we're seeking for it in certain way, in different manners or in different ways. And we think this is the answer to it or, or maybe, you know, substance is the answer or maybe certain friends. And, and that's all we're really searching for is having that peace within us that, you know, this is what I like. This is where I'm happy. This is where I'm satisfied. And sometimes we take that journey mm, going in yeah, circles, yeah. you know, finding satisfaction here and there, thinking that this is it, this is what I've been searching, that emptiness. Um, but where we can really find satisfaction is in, in the Word, in God, in prayer. I mean, that is where our souls are really searching and needing. We need direction. And... Um, once you start hearing God's voice, once you start hearing Him in prayer, He starts to show you what it is that you need in your life. And it's just His closeness. We're humans. We're humans, and we need that supernatural um, reassurance and trust that, you know, the jobs, friends, whatever, they fail. <laughs> I mean, they're just not forever, and, and here we are at, in, at the age of 40. <laughs> I'm not going to say 40 what, but <laughs> in our 40s. And um, I, I have to be honest, you know, we've go, gone in different directions, you know, finding more, you know, as a family, you know, let's try this or let's try, you know, foods or let's try that. You know, everywhere that we go, it's fun. It's wonderful and everything, but nothing's more satisfying than having a family that we are able to trust in God. And I'm thankful that but that's where we found satisfaction as a whole family is reaching the throne of God every time there's been a uh, trial or a difficulty as a family we found it's not satisfying we're on vacation I mean as fun as it is <laughs> vacations are wonderful but satisfaction has been when we're all in our living room and there's need whether it's family who's sick my father passed away this this past year through through being sick with COVID and nothing was more satisfying during those trials or during those times than when we were all able to get together and my sons were able to pray over me for strength. We were able to pray over our families and my sister and my brothers and we lost we lost both of our parents but with my siblings and that was a difficult time. And my husband's family, my uh, grandmother, Diaz, she went through a very difficult time. There was nothing better and more satisfying at that time when we're scrambling for doctors, when we're scrambling for what we're going to do, when we all were just able to come together in prayer and ask God 
to help her and, and God gave her the victory and we all celebrated together afterwards. We were all so thankful together and through the hard and the good, the good and the bad, we were able to come in and, and, and put God in the middle of all of that. And that's strength and that's satisfaction. And I, I, I'm encouraging you, look for that, look for satisfaction in God in all things. Put him first in all things. There is a scripture I did want to share in, in that, um, and it was um, finding the peace of God, and that's you know that's where we find the peace of God, and that's how we're satisfied. And it's <clears throat> the Lord at, is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, be prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, He will guard your hearts and minds. Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're living through it. Yeah. We're living through it. And we need each other. Uh, I can tell you that it's meant so much this last week. We, we, did, we tried this last week. And uh, we had an email, uh, mysacredspacechurch at gmail.com. And we started a little uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Sacred Space. Uh, and, um, and we've been so excited because people have reached out. And just you reaching out to us, some with prayer requests, and our kids, we just, uh, I, I can tell you that on a daily basis, we put the needs uh, before them, and we begin to pray and ask God. And for us, it's exciting because not only do we pray, but we also share the praise reports, the victory reports, where God does the impossible. Yes. I mean, we act like we're a 911 dispatch. We'll get a, a call that someone that was dealing with cancer the other day. We stopped our dinner. We uh, got on Facebook and recorded a, a special prayer just for that for that person because we felt like nothing can stop this prayer to, uh, from going. Nothing can. God's arms are not too short. Right. His hand is long enough to get to anything, and His hand uh, can get past every COVID restriction in the hospital because He has the VIP pass. And so we felt very, very strongly about doing that. And so I'm going to say a prayer uh, uh, before we close because I felt very strongly to do that. Uh, if you join us, I, I want to pray for you. I pray in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you for our family. I thank you for our friends who are joining us now or maybe later. I pray, God, for your presence to reach and touch them. I thank you, God. My wife and I, we agree right now that, God, if, you, if we could just... Uh, get a hold of you yes. and, 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 and seek your face and, and Lord ask you to reach to every need. God, we don't want to give in to the spirit of this, this time. We don't want to give in to the fear of this day. God, save us right now from every negative emotion. God, I pray, Lord, we refuse to be controlled by depression, by frustration. God, we refuse that the, the, the hand of hell wanting to put anxiety in the cloud of fear and dark thoughts. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we could speak words that bring life. God, that's what you speak. You speak life. And so I pray that, God, if you're speaking, we need to allow your words of life to come inside. God, we don't want to be just satisfied with just a small touch of your presence. God, we need you to be at the center of our life. And I pray, God, help us to walk with you, next to you, and Lord, not only do we want to be hearers, but we want to be doers. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, protect. In the middle of this virus, protect from sickness. I pray your healing power. We thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we really do appreciate it and it means a lot. Uh, uh, we wanted to just take a few weeks here at the start of the year to do this. and So thank you for being a part of it. We love you. God bless you. God bless you.